A few moments later. Not happy. What happened? Not happy. What? This is a rain jacket. What? Did I it... walked. I, I'm. Did it rain? Okay. You know who goes to a gas station, walks there in the rain to get a beer and a brown paper bag? Not a good person. And that's what you made me look like. I, uh... I walked to the gas station. Why'd you go get a gas? Why'd you go to the gas station? Because you said I had to have a beer. I got mezcal again, what? and we're doing fall beers, and I couldn't even find a fall beer. So you're gonna accept my beer as a fall beer. All right. But I got to. It starts raining on me. Uh, there's lightning flashing. I got to test my toe shoes though. The toe. Wait, hold on, hold on. People of the internet, people of the internet. What the fuck is that? My toe shoes. They got. What do you mean my... toe shoe? Yeah, see, like you see my toes. It's a sock. No, that's a sock. No, it's not. What do you mean it's not? It's it's got a hard bottom. I could walk on glass. There's hard socks out there. Look at the half of my hard socks. Oh God, yeah. When you're Don't, a teenager, there's no, hard socks. no, need... not not that kind of no. But All right. there's hard socks. I'm sure. No, I don't think so. Nobody nobody shops for their so socks. So like, did you, you know go what? to the gas? I, I like I like my socks well done. Did you walk to the gas station in those? Yeah. In toe shoes? I walked to UDF. United you walked to Dairy UDF Farms. in toe shoes? Yes. Yes. All right. So so to, to those not from uh, Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati, West Virginia, parts of Indiana, United Dairy Farmers, UDF, is not a farm nor a dairy. It's a gas yeah. station. Right. Just like your Shell, your Sunoco, your... Uh, Milkshakes. All those places. They ice got the little cream. ice cream counter and shit like that. But it's mainly a gas station where you stop in and get... Thing. But you wore the toe shoes? I wore the toe shoes. They were comfortable. It's like going barefoot, but you're protected and you can walk on rocks. And What prompted the toe shoes? I, I was just making sure they fit good for kayaking purposes and wanted to kind of oh, break Oh, see, that explains it. There's a... A practical purpose for the toe shoes, kayak. No, there's. I know people who wear them normally. Like one of my buddies in the Bailey at the FCC games, who plays the trombone. And the, uh, he wears. Listen, toe no, shoes. Nothing you've described about this person is normally. Yeah, maybe not. He's a scientist. Toe shoes, trombone, soccer. What's wrong with soccer? And there's nothing wrong with it, but you're yeah. describing three things that aren't the normal. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Let me take my rain jacket off now that I'm done well, walking to the store for a beer. He's got a beer, finally. We we're we're, we're the beyond the mezcal. We've been, we've been started. They've been Start waiting the for show. you. People of the internet, I'm Mike. I'm Brendan. I'm pissed. This, this is Thirsty Thursday. So, you walk to get a beer. Yes, I did. I'm assuming this is a good beer. Uh, probably not. It's hold an on. imperial. Hold on, you know hold on, hold on, hold on. What What happened to the top of that bag? I got mad and I was twisting it and it's like... Okay, Rrr. so the person behind the counter didn't do that. No. I would have asked for a refund. If, if the person behind the counter would have twisted the top of my bag like that, if you're like, if you're like anger, I feel like I'm supposed to light it. If you're exactly, you're like anger fucking the top of my bag. What are you fucking doing? I don't know. That thing, that thing looks like you're, if you, if you untwist it, there's taffy in the middle. You better have a beer after I did all. This. I have, I have multiple. You have. That's a problem. Yeah. It is, you should be the one walking. That's around another episode. Bag. So, what kind of beer do you have? It's New Belgium. It's New Belgium. It's a blue can. It's the Voodoo, Voodoo Ranger, Ranger series. Fruit Force. Fruit, fruit Force. Punch IPA. A Fruit Punch IPA. 9.5% Fruit Punch it's IPA. It's fall. It's yeah. September. Yes. There's football in the air. Right. And fruit you punch. said Fruit Punch. Fruit Punch. Because. Um, Does it have a sippy people... top? People like to take vacations 
in the winter, in the fall, and they go to places where there's fruit that makes up fruit punch. I'm brought it around. There it is. You fruit punch IPA. Welcome. Fruit punch IPA. So Brendan's got too intense for me. New Belgium's like Voodoo already. Ranger Fruit Force IPA. I've, I got this on standby. Just I, when I decide that I'm not drinking this beer, I'm going to finish my Mezcal bottle. I've got a couple things. So okay, what do you got? We're going to go beer first. I have... You're going to be mad. It's not a fall beer either. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So I was just going to be mad if you didn't go get a beer. Oh, no. Beer. It is um, a beer by a metal band. It's a beer by Iron Maiden. This is their Hellcat, Hellcat Cold IPA. Yes. So we've talked about cold IPAs before, like a couple weeks ago. And yep, IPA lager. It's, I, I, I also don't know if this was always an IPA. I feel like the Brewdog Hellcat might have been a different... Well, I don't know if it was always a cold IPA. I feel like it might have been a different type of Probably beer not. earlier, and they named it a cold IPA. It. Well, anyway... It's it's Iron Maiden's Brew Dog Hellcat Cold IPA. Cheers. All right. Important it's glass fruit here. Punch. It's fruit punch on the nose immediately. Well, I guess <laughs> I, I guess I could use this glass that was gonna be for my mezcal. It gives fruit punch on the nose. Top uncle from my nephew at Christmas. You remember when you used to go to school and they go, here's the boutique. Buy something for your parents and relatives with your change. What is that? Oh, I've got one too? I've got the dad joke loading. I've got the, the locker, the little, or the safe that my daughter got me. I've got the dad, the man, the myth, the legend cube. Nice. Oh, I've got so much of this, like, your kid goes to the school, like, store during the holidays or whatever right. and buys you stuff or she goes to the store with your wife and she buys the stuff for you. One of those two gotcha. things normally happens for me. All right. Cheers. What do you, what do you, uh, it doesn't look like fruit punch, but it looks like a nice hazy. It smells really good. So you've I got a top lie. uncle cup. I've got, uh, this is from sugar, sugar land shine in uh, Gatlinburg, yes. Tennessee. This is, I love collecting their pint glasses and coffee mugs. Cheers. Mm. And I'm noticing the uh, FC jersey. Oh, this is dangerous, my friend. What I'll you tell mean? you what, that does not drink like nine and a half percent. That is fantastic. You know what? I would recommend this to non IPA fans even. New Belgium. Shout yeah. out. Holla. Yeah. Voodoo Ranger Fruit Force Fruit Punch IPA. That is fantastic. And Brew Dog, you're not bad either. Go. Oh, man. All right. No, all good. Wow. Thirsty yeah. Thursday. Here we go. Fantastic. So, mm. we've got beer. F FCC, what you were saying? Yes. I've seen the FC F FCC jersey. Yes. Um, and then here's the, here's, and I'm going to ask this question now, and I'm going to play stupid soccer guy for a moment. Like, soccer gotcha. stupid. So, it's an FCC jersey. But do yes. me a favor, stand up a little bit for the camera. Mercy Health across the chest. There, I've seen, uh, like Emeritus, Emirates, Emirates, Fly Emirates, Fly Emirates all these brand Arsenal. names. So I need, is the company across the chest like the primary sponsor? I know most sports teams have more than one sponsor. Primary. Is that the? Is that like the? Are they fighting for that spot? Well, this isn't the new kit. The new kit also has Kroger here. Um, so yeah, there is a, I believe our deal with Mercy Health is coming up, but it's a big deal. Uh, when ours was signed, I believe it was the biggest in the league, but uh, sponsorship to put someone's name on the chest, they pay a lot of money for that. And that money goes into buying really good players. And, right. So yeah. So for the future, the gettingwork.com t-shirts, we're going to be taking sponsorships or for the jerseys for yes. the spot right here. Brewery, uh, whiskey, whiskey. Uh, uh, cheeseburger, whatever, whatever Talk you want to do. 
Tacos. Berea tacos. Berea tacos oh. Berea or Beria? Beria. Beria? Beria? I've been saying it wrong. Fuck me. Uh, so you're drinking that Berea New Belgium is a city in IPA. Kentucky. B-E-R-E-A. Berea. It is. The Berea Kentucky. is a city in Kentucky. Berea, Kentucky. I just realized my hat matches your beer. I got the New Belgium brewing cap on. Oh, very nice. Very uh, nice. I picked this up to you like 10 years ago when we were bartending. This Real was quick. one of those, like, where the rep walks in with the box full of shit they're just giving out randomly to people, and you're the manager, so you sit there and you see them come in first, and you're just like, oh, hold on, before you walk out there, that's mine. Like, there's only one red hat, red baseball cap in there for New Belgium. I'm taking that bitch. That's the way to go. I have so many things from reps that I love. Like, that was that was probably the best part of bar. One of the best things about bartending. I wouldn't for all those own years. bar tools. And- if I didn't get bar tools from like liquor reps 20, like 20, 10 do you years have a, ago. Do you have a roll? I've got a leather bar, a leather Woodford I've got a Reserve. Le- I have bar a leather roll. Woodford Reserve bar. I think, I think we, we got, got them together. The same... <laughs> yes, we I both got know. leather Woodford Reserve bar rolls. Right. And for those wondering what the fuck we're talking about, when you bartend, you, you don't keep your tools in a box or a bag like a normal person. Picture you, in a movie you take you a see leather a serial killer with knives. Yes, it's that same like thing. Somebody torturing someone. Oh, it's the same a... thing where somebody's yeah. just like, "Here's all my tools." They roll it out, but like a leather, it, it's a big sheet of leather that you stick all your tools in. That folds in half, and then you roll that up, and that is kind of your little carry all for your bar tools. And I think, yeah, you and I both got them from wood. Mine is behind the driver's seat of my car. Mine's downstairs, underneath my bar in the basement. Gotcha. Uh, Real quick for the FCC thing. Um, this week we have the chance. If we win, they will win. The I didn't know if you said the chance, C H A N C E, or chance, C H A N T S. I couldn't tell which one you said. Do we have it? The chance or a chant? I have a feeling that uh, we will be chanting Saturday night at Lunkin Airport, welcoming back the team as they have won the Supporters Shield, which is the championship for the best record at the end of the season wait it's a big deal wait what's it called the supporters shield is that the only championship that's called a shield or is calling a championship a shield a modern a thing in no. soccer no that's the supporters shield there's different what's uh, a supporter like shield that. the supporters shield is just the name that is given to the team that win the championship for the team that win has the best record at the end of the regular season between both conferences, East and West. In a lot of uh, European soccer, the English Premier League and whatnot, they don't have a playoff system. At the end of the season, the two best team or, or the best team with the best record is the winner of the Premier League. Now there are other tournaments, Champions League, FA Cup, things like that. But so we are going to have playoffs after this, but there is a championship for the team with the best overall record. That is an accomplishment. You get a title. You also get entered into Champions League the next season, which we will be in. And there's a chance FC Cincinnati could go ahead and lock it up this weekend. We are going to lock it up. It's just when will it happen. And it looks like it'll happen this weekend in Toronto. Toronto, so, FC, get it. I don't, I've never been to a game. I, I need to take probably, you to a game. Probably never be, going to a game. Yeah, the only funny. chance I ever had to go to a game, I gave you my tickets. Have you, you've, you've seen my craziness before. I have a great video of my craziness. It's I my fault. You, What's, it's yeah, my yeah, it's fault. fault. It, it is kind of your fault. I mean, I was always watching, but I never really went. Um, yeah, and it, it's gotten kind of crazy. I have a bubble gun now, a bubble bazooka. I saw a picture of you with the bubble gun. Uh, I, have, I have video of using the bubble gun. So you see everybody's just jumping around and we're mad and crazy. And here comes the bubble gun. Ready? Ah, bubbles, 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 bubbles. This motherfucker's got a goddamn bubble gun. That's how you support a team. Anyway, what are we talking about? The FCC FCC is doing well. We're going to call it that. The FCC. Number one Uh, team in Major League Soccer right now. The Bengals just got their first win of the season. We are now one and two. Uh, I got my... Oh, I am also one and two. As well. Um, Brendan and I play fantasy football together. We're in the same league. I, I'm I'm such an egomaniac. I'm such a type D personality that I couldn't find a fantasy league to join. So I started one myself. Who did you play this week? You. How did you do? You beat my ass. Well, 
You fucked me like I paid for it. (laughs) Are you like the final score between Brendan and myself was what was your team name? What's your team name? The Sloppy Stakes. The final score between the Sloppy Stakes and FC American Football. (laughs) 135.02 to 107.68. It wasn't as bad of a blowout as it could have been. Like, I got a blowout. It wasn't the Miami game. Did you see that Miami game where they won by 50 points? (laughs) What the fuck? Did you see the coach of that team went in the crowd and was letting fans call plays? That coach is kind of a crazy person. I I kind of enjoy his presence. He's doing the same thing that Coach Prime is doing in Colorado, where I'm just going to be this wild, crazy character. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders. Yeah, I know who he is. Oh, he's the man. He's the fucking man. Uh, except for the fact that right now every douchebag success bro on the internet uses like his interviews as like their their video fodder of like this is who I want to be like. Ba 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 ba. But other than that, I think he's fucking great. <laughs> Fantastic. So, you beat my ass in fantasy football. It was and hard to do. What would you I say was this. your Going like? Into- Going into Monday, I had two receivers still to play, and a that was the thing. I was loop. I was fucked on Sunday night. I'm glad I didn't need T. Higgins to do the nothing that he did. Man, he has been a letdown. He's been my big. Do you have a player who's been your biggest letdown? I think T. Higgins would be my biggest letdown. Um, the Bills' defense crushed it for me this week. So but... I, I'm I'm in running back hell. Yeah. I, I have I've I've Patrick Mahomes as my quarterback, so I've got a good solid ride all year long. I've got I've got Zach Wilson from the Jets as my backup. I picked I I drafted uh, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers as quarterbacks during the draft. My goal was I drafted Aaron Rodgers because I thought this is going to be his fuck you year. He's gonna throw <laughs> he's gonna throw so many touchdowns because he's trying to show the entire fucking league up. And then he literally does the Simpsons yeah. meme where he walks in, puts his hat on the fucking nightstand, turns around, grabs his hat, puts it back on, and walks back out the fucking door. There was a great package going around like, from what the, fuck? the NFL memes page of the Aaron Rodgers highlight package for the season. And it was him running onto the field. Oh, fuck. And then it said the end. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. So you think he comes back next year? Is I he, he going to try to make up for this shit? I don't care. I don't care either. But I picked <laughs> Zach Wilson up because I was like, oh, this little boy is going to show off because Aaron Rodgers got hurt and he has to replace him. And he fucking sucks too. Absolutely. My my biggest problem I had this, this week, and I'm going to blame... TikTok and a little bit of my wife because Uh I follow Isaac Rochelle, who is a player for the Raiders defense. Okay. Uh, His wife is Allison Kutch, who I don't know much about her, but she's some like influencer, TikTok celebrity, super popular. I follow him because he's also got like a clothing line about like, I'm a good husband clothing line, husband PSA. Shout out. But like, he does his own thing. She does his own thing. I follow him on social media. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to draft the Raiders D. They got me one fucking point. The Bengals D, who is my D I should have played, who was sat on my fucking bench, got yep. 13 fucking points. And would have gotten me a little bit closer. Like, would have started pulling you out of my butt a little bit. It would have gotten a you 13. A little bit. Would have pulled would've, thirteen out of me. I'll tell you that right now, no, at least. If they would, if they would, now here's an interesting fact: if they would have gotten you thirteen, and you flip those numbers, you get thirty-one. That's how many my defense scored. <laughs> and that's that's the thing too is as I had such a low performing week, but I'm in running back hell. I I had, let's see, Jamal Williams from the New Orleans Saints. He's out. He's on my injured reserve. I've got Samaj P. Ryan, who plays for Denver, and they fucking suck. I've got Joshua Kelly. Eh. I feel like I did decent on wide receivers. I got uh, Debo Samuel, and I've got Stefan Diggs. I did decent with a quarterback, but I feel like I really fucked up in my running back core this year. I didn't draft a good running back. I can't get my hands on one. We'll see what happens. So you are currently standing now we are in the same division. We are both in the Correct. east. The east. 
You are currently standing at the bottom of the division. I'm standing at the bottom of the league. I don't know if it's the bottom of the league. Let's see. No, there is a team that is 0-3. There is only one team that is 0-3. There it is. Someone named Team Redwood. Ah, shout out to Sam. Sorry, Sorry, bud. Yeah, that's the only team that's 3-0. There are no 0-3. So I'm the bottom of our division. Go ahead. You're the bottom of our division, yes. I am. And then, is that all you? Is that, is that all you wanted to point out? Maybe. Well, thank you. It's three teams at one and two. Did you hear that? I'm glad you walked to the, the the store to get the beer now. You could have hurt me. Anyway, there's three of us at two and one. There's three of us at one and two. I'm up there with the Hucker from behind and the Water Tower showers. I don't. We know. have the worst team names ever. Yes. In our league. And I'm just going to go through these team names. And everybody that's in this league can think about it. So here's our team names. And I'm going to read these in in division order. First, in the East Division, we have Water Tower Showers. Okay, beautiful. FC American Football, which is yeah, you. Yeah, that's me. Hucker from Behind. I'm ready for the next one. Ass Eaton Season. Etienne. Etienne, as Etienne, yeah. but I want to pronounce it Eaton. As Etienne, there's, there's, there's an Etienne in soccer that I, that, yeah, okay. Anyway, go ahead. The Ginger Ninjas. You would think that would be my team name, but it wasn't. And the Sloppy Steaks, which is me. Sloppy Steaks, yep. And in our West Division, we have the Cincinnati Steamers, Team Gotez, the Run and Tugs. Now wait. Never mind. Go ahead. No, what? No, 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 no. Oh, I have no idea. I was just trying. To, I mean, that's terrifying. Is is the is the person you run running and at you tug? You, if they're running at you, like picture someone us uh, uh, like just screaming, running at See, you. See, my brain running. goes in a completely different direction. I think no, of it's I, like, that's what you have to do when you're running in football. You you your your quarterback hands you the ball. You have to run full speed, and the whole time you just gotta sit there and you gotta tug. You gotta tug <laughs> while you run. You gotta run and you gotta tug at the same time. If you stop tugging, you gotta stop running. See that would no that no my complete thought was that is a great defense mechanism in a fight. Someone's like, oh, and you just run at him like ah, and yeah. I mean that's one hundred percent one hundred percent the case, but I took it more from an offensive angle. Okay. Give me the ball, coach, or give me the ball, QB. Ah! Yeah, you're right. That's very offensive. That's terrifying. Yeah, that's bad. So anyway, we have the running tugs, the run tugs. We have the slashers, the Covington Crooners, which is a a reference from the same show as mine is my I, I have the sloppy steaks from I think you should leave and the Covington crooner is a play on uh, the, the the driving crooner from I think you should driving leave season crooner. three and our last team good old team Redwood shout out to you Sam so we have a league with some fucked up names so we've got beer I've almost got this first beer finished. But I'm going to save a little bit because I've got something else. What do you have? I have my Mezcal. You have your Mezcal? Great, because I'm going to do a fucked up shot. Well, I don't have a shot glass nearby, but I want you to do your fucked up shot anyway. So I, I, I've got to deal with 9.5% volume. And, you know, I'm not used to doing Imperials. And I just got a new ship called the Star Eagle. And I've been taking this... Sh- Never mind. Go ahead. How did you just go from booze to spa- space field? Space field? Starfield. Starfield. Space field. Space field. You know. Starfield. It's like Steinfeld. Grow up. Okay. The Etsy version of the game. Exactly. Space field. So, I've got a shot that I'm going to do. I don't okay. have a shot glass. I'm going to do it straight out of the bottle because it's one of the little airplane bottles. So, it's a pre-mixed shot? Well, it's or just a shot it's of alcohol. liqueur. It's oh, just it's an alcohol. Liqueur. A liqueur. This is mango shotta. You know how I always told people the different. Sorry, mango shotta. I've never. Yes. Really but From... do you know how I used to tell people the difference between a liquor and a liqueur? Because that would come up every now and then. What? You can't describe the flavor of a liquor any other way, but other than vodka tastes like vodka, whatever. Like liqueurs taste like strawberry or mango or flavors, but. Rum is rum. Whiskey is whiskey. Those are liquors. Anyway, so sorry, I don't know. This is a tequila with natural flavors and... I like tequilas. Certified but... colors? Certified colors? 
What's it called? Let me look it up. Certified Colors. Mango Shot Up. What are uncertified colors? S-H-O-T-T-A. Mango Shot Up. From what I've seen so far, this is supposed to be kind of a, a new fireball-ish, you know, like screwball-ish, like quick shot sweet flavor liqueur. Oh, wow. Or liquor. Um, What? Yeah. Give me a moment. Mango shot. Stay spicy. The voice. Look at, the, look at this. The advertising department actually thought this is a good idea. Sweet as a mango, spicy as a bitch. Oh, what the fuck? How spicy is a bitch? What? Spicy as a bitch? Spicy as no. That is what the act- fuck does that mean? I thought I was reading it wrong. Oh, what it, the fuck? Sweet as a mango. Spicy it says it on the bottle. Does sweet really? as a mango, but still spicy as a bitch. What comes next? Hashtag take a shot of. Inspired by the mango nada, I don't know Buddy. what the mango nada is. The mango shada is designed to take your party anywhere. Mango this is made by open. Sazerac out of Louisville. Shake hands with sa- oh, well, that's where all your mango and tequila comes from. Right, Louisville. They shake hands with savory spices to make it the drink that bites back. Oh fuck. Twenty six percent ABV. All right. It's a 26%. shot you can enjoy without regrets. It says this is a shot you can enjoy without regrets. Mike, let me know how it goes. Vamos. Oh, man, oh what the fuck? What's it smell like? Initial impressions. So the jalapeno is super vegetal. It's it. I, I don't smell heat. I smell like green jalapeno-ishness. Like, like the veginess of a jalapeno. Um, Real quick, look at the this. The mango is well. really strong, but almost it's like there's orange in there. I'm going to show you this picture, and I want you to describe it to everyone who might not be watching the video podcast. Okay. This is on their site. It's, it's one on of the their random, site? One of the random pictures at the bottom of the page from their Instagram, at Mango Shada, July 20th, 2023. What is this? Why does that woman have jalapenos on her eyes? So it's one of these chicks with, like, the uh, the uh, the mask, like the facial mask, like she's at a spa. But instead of cucumbers over the eyes, they're jalapeno slices. And it it looks like the mask might be like mango or mango mush. It looks like it's cheese whiz, or it looks like American cheese that they've cut off. Yeah, I think it's supposed to represent the mango. So it says, don't mind me relaxing with my mango face mask and jalapeno cereal. Hashtag self-care. P.S. These are AI-generated images. Please do not try at home. P.P.S. Somebody from their PR department had to go in and, like, AI search, like, mango jalapeno facial. It said swipe to the end for a surprise. Hang on. You must be 21 and over to see this. See why. Okay, that's fine. I I don't want to log in right now. You know what? It's trying to get you to buy shit. It's it's too much. But why is... So mango shotta. Mango shotta. A 50 milliliter shot. 52 proof. Mango jalapeno... Tequila. Uh, fuck it. Here we go. You got this. Ooh, whole thing. Nice. Oh. Oh, you look sad. <laughs> Buddy, are you okay? Oh, my. Oh. Oh. Initial impressions? Okay. What are you feeling? Describe it. That now feels like a weird tea that I bought in like a store in the middle of like Cincinnati on like a dirty street, <laughs> but not in a bad way. Like I'm not wait, super wait. upset at that. Wait, how can you say that and say, but not in a bad way? Oh man. What is that? What is that? Is there an aftertaste? There's a, there's a wild ass aftertaste. It tastes like fruit and dust. Fruit and dust. What is that? <laughs> is that the jalapeno? Because the jalapeno tastes like... Oh, oh my god. Is that what their website, website does? Music. Oh, it your has website music. has music? Your your mango's oh, got... You can stop. Oh, and it stopped. Cheers to the newest hot shot in town. Mango shot. And I think that's, see, that's what they're going for. The newest hot shot in town. Where Fireball leaned on cinnamon, this leans on jalapeno. 
Would so I say your this is mouth and your jalapeno tequila? This isn't mouth blowing hot. Like this is not right. gonna ruin your day or your meal or like if you drank this and like shot this and went and ate some food. Like I'm already cool. Like is it more of the flavor of jalapeno as opposed it's to the so spice vegetal. of jalapeno. It's so, what? so vegetal. It's just the, like like you know how when you eat a jalapeno, not the spice, yeah, yeah. but like the green veginess of the jalapeno. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's very it's much of it's that it's 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 how would you like almost green also? peppery? It's almost like green peppery rather oh, yeah. than jalapeno. Are you getting any mango? Tons of mango. Oh, okay. It reminds me of if you've had like. The I think it's called like Mucho Mango by Arizona. They make like a mango, like a drink, like Arizona iced tea. They make like a mango drink. It tastes very similar to that. Or the Arizona I I RX. Mango. I had fruit jerky today. It was so Man. good. You know, I would honestly do that shot again. If I was at a party and that's the shots that we're doing. You got a big ass bottle of mango shot and that's what we're drinking. I'm yeah. 100% doing that. You toss me another one of these little airplane bottles. I'm 100% doing that. It's well, shocking go. at first. Like you're not like. There's not much that it sounds like. It's not like much that's out there. So it no. would be, I would imagine because like mango sounds- jalapeno tequila. That's wild. It's almost like a mini margarita. That's what that's what it is. It's like a mini margarita. Mini mango oh. margarita. Yeah. I love mango margarita and pineapple yeah. margarita. Yeah, you would dig that, though. So, mango shot up. Uh, I've recently found that my new drink, shit. I used to just sip silver. T- I threw the bottle over my shoulder. I- I'm also here in Thunder, but that hey, was yeah. good timing. You throw a bottle and Thunder, ha- it's crazy. Um, I usually drink, for a while, it was just silver tequila. Right. Just silver mezcal, whatever. Now, I will drink mezcal like that but i have found that i really enjoy tequila and pineapple juice just one of those little metal cans of pineapple juice tequila and pineapple is it normally is- dole it's normally dole that you see in uh, bars I think right so, yeah i yeah. love those things yeah i used to drink one of those almost every day when i was behind a bar that had them now what do you have there same beer same beer okay iron maiden hellcat cold ipa you have two of them yeah i had one in the brewmate Anytime we come to record an episode. Mm. Mm. Oh, let me describe what's happening. Mike is covering his mustache in foam. We got double thumbs up. What Saved it. Been? Saved that one. Mike said um, beer. I always come with a brewmate with a second beer for the episode. Nice. And uh, it's got the little brewmate. Like You keep this in the freezer, and this goes oh. in the bottom. That way, it can fit a tall boy, but if all you use is a regular 12-ounce can... It still fits because the ice base in the bottom acts as like a spacer now, what to if I raise wanna, it up to your mouth level. What if I want to put like a high noon or a seltzer in there? That one you have to buy a different product for. My wife has the seltzer version that's a you little bit have more a narrow. Freezer insert. There's there's a company that does that. There there's oh. a different company that does that. I don't have their shit. Uh, I like that one. I bought Brewmate. It works really good. I've left beers in there overnight and they've stayed fucking. Brewmate. Cool. There you go. There you go, Brewmate. Gettingwork.com. Mike at right. gettingwork.com. Hit me up. No, wait. Don't hit him up. He's already got one. Me. Well, I, I'll i I'll get you one. And then okay, I'll thanks. All right. Brewmate. Perfect. I'll take the skinny one. High noon. Brewmate. Pineapples. They're pretty good. So with that, we talked about doing a little bit of business. Let's talk about some, uh, oh, some give you business a call. savings. I know some people who got a call. <laughs> Man. Some 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 business savings this week. Uh, unfortunately, and I want to preface this is it's never cool when somebody loses a job. Absolutely. Not I'm not saying it's cool that anybody does not have a job anymore, but it's WWE release season. Well, what if you're like, never mind. I, We're gonna get I, to somebody who probably had it coming. We'll talk about them later on. Coming. But. To, to to go back to that, WWE has released several talent. Uh, actually, I believe the final number was twenty one. It talents. feels like it's. It feels like. Does it feel like it's a yearly season now? Like every year, there's a like. Oh, it definitely does. It's it's cutting season. Like there was the big one about two years ago yeah. that was the shocking one. And who was it? it? Was when Bray was initially fired, and they just started firing people you never expected them to fire. And 
let people go. You never expected them to mm-hmm. let go. Didn't renew Daniel Bryan or didn't w- weren't able to keep Daniel Bryan. Right. So. Yeah. And but anyway, it's that time of year again, and they've released twenty one names over three 21. days. The last day, uh, September twenty third. We're not really going to talk about. It was Melanie Brzezinski. She was one of the what's considered NIL talents, next in line. Part of essentially WWE's program of taking college athletes, grooming and vetting them into being WWE superstars. So we're not going to spend too much started? time on that. You remember when that all started? Hey, About we don't want ago. indie wrestlers anymore. They're we're going back on that so athletes. hard. They're changing that around so much oh, yeah. now. Like they're bringing in so many like actual wrestlers as opposed to those stuff. And what we're about to talk about That's is you, a lot of names. Well, a lot of names on the list we're about to talk about are those NIL talents that are people that were never actually wrestlers, wrestling fans, rest people in the wrestling industry. Yeah. They were just college athletes that got a look by WWE talent for one reason or another. I don't know if she was an NIL, up. but she was a college athlete. I feel like the biggest star recently might be Tiffany Stratton. I She's didn't fantastic. Wanna, I didn't want to like it at first. I hated it. They started with like the daddy's spoiled girl thing. Daddy said that I got daddy's money. Nothing. Now she's just doing this whole like the toodles and like she's gone more into the mean girl thing. But like I'll tell you what, she's talented as hell. And um, she man. and not trying to pull this car, but when you look at her, she looks. She's a big, not big. She's a, a jacked, ripped Barbie. Like she, really she looks like she was yeah. painted in a fucking anime. Yeah. Like she's just ripped to the gills, like abs and all the lines and all the cuts and all the bullshit. But then just like pink and blonde hair and all that bullshit. And it's just it's a crazy. Is, you can tell she is a gymnast who has turned to the weights all of a sudden, and now she's just become an animal. Yeah, and. And she was part of that process of bringing in college athletes as well. But that was the creeds and stuff too, right? I believe so. They were part of the process of that. But recently we lost a few of them starting on 921. Yep. Uh, We're going to go through this list. 921 was the (laughs) biggest day. That was the most amount of names. And when we go through that list, first off, first name is NIL talent Brooklyn Barlow. Not super familiar with that talent. I watch a lot. If there's, Here's the thing recently, too. I admittedly have not watched WWE SmackDown or Raw since the Bloodline split, I guess. I, I've really kind of checked out. I just watched my AEW. I've... I've started buying seasons of Lucha Underground again. You know how much I love that. Uh, I'm waiting for NXT UK, Europe to come. I was watching NXT, but I've recently checked out because someone has me busy on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock now for some reason. Don't but don't anyway. don't tell them where we record. It destroys oh, wait, the whole no. logo. Oh, sorry. Uh, on Thursday nights, I'm yeah. Listening. Brendan didn't say that we actually record this before Thursday and edit it and put it out. What's, God damn it. <laughs> this is when I shouldn't have 9.5% beer, walking in the rain, threat of being struck by light. I'm sorry. It's anyway, let's beer, talk about these good. people. So I, I think, I think we, I think we can encompass space. four of these names together. Brooklyn Barlow, Alexis Gray, Kevin Ventura Cortez, that sounds made up, and Daniel MacArthur. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Every one of those. Let me repeat these back. If I told you there's a soap opera, and these are the characters, Brooklyn Barlow. That sounds Ooh, like a soap opera. That sounds Alexis so awesome. Gray. Ooh. Kevin Ventura Cortez. Kevin Ventura Cortez. Daniel MacArthur. Daniel MacArthur. <laughs> Your Daniel was into Daniel. Daniel MacArthur. Where, where are the drugs? Where's Daniel? <laughs> okay. So... Okay, those, I don't those think they ever talents, really got a chance. They never really... They were NI- and when you look at this list, they're even classified as NIL talent, not yeah. even NXT talent. So they were part of that program. They were brought in. Probably what happened is they didn't see what they wanted to see. They didn't see the progress they wanted to see. 
Uh, something didn't line up with their expectations. They said, hey, we're going to go ahead and cut you. Now, the thing is with those, I, I don't know how an NIL contract works. Is there probably a clause in there where, hey, after the first five or six months, if we don't like see your progress, we could terminate this contract? Probably. I don't know that for sure, but I would feel like WWE probably has something built in for the NIL talent where yeah, if yeah. you show up and you're a fucking dumbass dickhead, they can just cut you in like the first three months of your contract and not pay you any money. Yeah, yeah. So I apologize. Please leave your singlet on the table. 100%. Like, like go ahead and leave that here and get on your way out. Yeah. Gerald Briscoe is going to show you the door. Right. So Remember those when were the NIL the talents. showing you the door was Canyon Seaman. Best name Could ever. you imagine having to answer to a guy named Canyon Seaman? He sound he sounds like a fucking ride at a really fucked up Disneyland. <laughs> Canyon Seaman, guard your face! Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Oh. it's like the log flume. Well, thank God. It's oh, like a log flume, a flume. Uh, anyway, okay, oh. where are we at after this? So, so the four nil, all the nil talent, they're fucking gone. When we start getting into actual NXT names, Ulyssa Leon. Yes. She was doing some stuff for a little bit. Never really wrestled not too super much. Was more in Was more in the corner of people and things like that. So Okay. So yeah. probably probably didn't do what they wanted to do. Didn't necessarily be in... Wasn't, probably wasn't in-ring talent. Right. So not much to do there. Like, Bryson Montana. Give me another soap opera name. Go ahead. Bryson Montana. Bryson Montana. There you go. Now, what's crazy is these are the real. Are these their real names, or are these their? I don't know. I think you listen. To Leon is not the real name. I think that's like the NXT wrestling name. Nice, nice. Okay, so after Bryson Montana, we have Quincy Motherfucking Elliot. They had Quincy Elliott host one of their premium live events, if I recall. They really thought they were going to do something with Quincy Elliott, and man, Char- it did not work for me. Character over, 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 give a fuck. Like, yeah, th- that's a great idea. He was a flamboyant, like over the top, crazy dressing, crazy talking character who, like, w- could push people's buttons in like that gold dust esque mentality but they didn't do anything to make you give a fuck about the character i remember seeing like the fucking like him coming out on the scooter in like little like the clips of like nxt level up where you didn't even see those people and the next thing you know like you said he was hosting that fucking uh pay-per-view yeah it feels like they used his weight as a joke it was it was Which Velve- is always weird. It was Velveteen Dream with a weight as a joke. I mean, they had him smack his man boobs on men's head in the corner for the ten count instead and of the punches. I, I, I must have missed where that was a move. Uh, we'll have to find a clip and find yeah, find a clip of that. How 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 do you? I'm pretty sure I have seen that. If I haven't seen that, then. I don't know what I was on, and we're gonna have an intervention on next week's episode. But I am. How 99- do you post that though? Like, how how do you pose that to somebody in a real? It's twenty twenty three. Who walks up to another town? Because like he didn't walk in and go, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna slap my man titty on the top of your head. <laughs> I I seriously doubt he walked in doing that. That means somebody was like, you know what's gonna be really funny? If you take that man titty and you slap it on top of his head. And Brendan's showing it. Nope. He is 100% in the corner. He's using left to right. I forgot about it. He's going back and forth. He's left one, right one, left Slapping one. Slapping right him one, with his man titties. Right I don't and know what I'm doing. This isn't, this isn't any kind of shaming over like person, no. body, or anything. That's just a weird thing to do on television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to see a woman do that. I don't want to see anybody do like Like, that's... That's wrestling made to look silly. Is is the silly. is the titty slams? That's fucking yeah. stupid. Um, that's one of those moves where so I'm completely with Jim Cornette. I think it just it's, does not need to be in wrestling. One day we're gonna hear 
that that was probably why that character was cut and that person was let go. Like, that seems like people had an idea. Hey, this will be great. Let's try this. This will be hilarious. Nobody told him what the rules were. Does that make, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody said like, hey, you you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, that that's, no one's going to believe top rope corner titty slaps. So Quincy Elliott leads into a man with three names, a man, a man with a plan, a man who honestly, I felt that they were, I I, multiple times felt they're going to do something big with this fucking dude. That's why they had three names because they tried three different times that they really thought even, do you remember raw underground or that's where he, I originally first saw the guy. Yeah, as Babatunde, if I'm Babatunde, not Babatunde, also known as Dabakato, also known as Commander Aziz. Uh, Apollo Crews' mis- former, what do you want to call the heavy manager? The muscle. Yeah, muscle. The heavy. yeah we'll, go, we'll go with muscle. You know you're big when you're muscle for Apollo Crews. <laughs> I mean, Man. you know you're a big boy if you're muscle. That dude, Uha Nation, has always been fucking jacked. I, I thought was that ripped. was such a better name. I like Apollo Crews, but Uha yeah. Nation is right. such a better fucking name for a professional right, right. wrestler. But I digress. Dabakato slash Commander Aziz, Az- Aziz slash Aziz. Babatunde, which Babatunde. I like. it is so fun to say. It's oh, it's like, so good, Babatunde. 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 It sounds like something from Beavis and Buddy. Babatunde. I want to Babatunde. 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 Oh, it's a shame that name won't get used anymore. And the thing is, that's an example of they had a big fucking dude, a big, a big dude. fucking dude, big like dude. massive fucking human being that honestly should be used in wrestling. Like yeah. you did shit with Yokozuna, Diesel, Sid, who were all talented, but like big dudes. If you, you did shit with so many people. If you use Giant Gonzalez, you can if figure out. If you can use Giant Tunde. Gonzalez, you can use that fucking Baba Tunde, Dabakato, Commander Aziz, Baba Tunde. Why didn't we say this for last? I just want to go out saying Baba Tunde. That might be the name of the episode this week, Baba Tunde. All right. But can we spell it like Baba? Baba. Baba. T O O N. And then Day, like Who Day, D E A, D E Y. Done deal. That's going to be the name of the episode Baba, Baba Tune Day. Day. So after Baba Day, the person who got released next was the dancing guy. And anytime you're a dancing guy, there's never a good fate for you. Never be the dancing guy unless you're Otis. Otis did the dancing thing and it yeah. worked. Disco Inferno did the dancing thing and it kind of worked. Alex Wright did the dancing thing and it didn't work. But you know who did and the Dango dancing thing and got released? Thing. Mr. Shanky. Mr. Shanky. Mr. Shanky's dance. His dance didn't work. He was His doing dance some didn't stuff work. with gender for me. I know he was a part of the initiative with India. He was a big dude. He was just seemed a little he moved like Great Kali, and there's not a lot of room for guys who move like Great Kali still. There it's are big guys who can move. Like if you look at uh Lance Archer, if you look at Big Bill, if you look at Wardlow, you, you don't I, the guy like there's a different strut that Ron a great and people have. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the thing is like also honestly, bro had a baby face. Yeah. Not not baby face like you're a good guy. Like like are you tw- are you a giant twelve year old? <laughs> like you look super young, and that's hard to right. sell as like a threat, intimidating as yep. dangerous. Like you will you if. If he shaved Giant Gonzalez, he probably wouldn't have gotten across as as a terrorizing threat. If you shaved him, he had a beard. Oh, I thought you. Oh, I was. Yeah, all he did have the fuzzy outfit. I was really thinking you thought the bodysuit was body hair. Le- le- thinking back that you actually thought he was a hairy man. I wish that would have actually been the case. Like one day he just unzips and takes the bodysuit off, and it's the actual, hope- his real hair. Is in the same like configuration as like the bodysuit oh, hair. Dear God, I hope that's a Merkin. I hope that's not real. Oh God! All right. So we got Ooh. Shanky. So we shanked our asses off. Yes. So we had a tag team released as well. Right. 
So there were two names, and and they they went not even two because two names because it's a tag team, but each person in the tag team had two names, well two versions of the way their name was said. So yeah, at one point they were Mace and Mansoor, and then they changed to Mansoa and Masse. Masse, yeah. I think at the end of the day, these are a perfect example of. Not figuring out what to do with, with talented two guys, talented dudes. And I, I'm, I'm probably, I might remember it's some of this wrong. Mace. I can't remember who he is offhand, his name, but he was a commentator as well. The even his look in Retribution, take the mask off of him and let him be. With the mask, he he actually looked like a comic book villain, just a big, giant dude with a mask and dreads. Like he, he looked like a comic book character. Could have been dropped into a Mad Max movie, and I wouldn't have known the difference. He was amazingly intimidating. He was if Predator was turned into a human. And you have Mansoor, who my 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 and my memory might be Royal broken. Ever. Won the greatest Royal Rumble ever, but also was the big signing star out of the initial uh, like Saudi Arabia agreement interaction. Am I am I correct? Remembering that correctly? Yeah, they actually have a Twitch stream. They're very entertaining. Yeah. Um, they've they've had some interesting comments on that Twitch stream. Uh, a few of them all pop out there, but go check that out or check out the articles talking about. It. There's a bunch of things they've said, but some of the unique things. Um, Mansoor wasn't on TV for a while because he wasn't allowed to lose because of the Saudi deal. Sounds huh. like a McMahon move back in the day, maybe. I so don't you're know. not going to put him on TV because you don't want him to lose. And you're not going to put him on TV to win all the way because it's Mansoor. Yeah. Now, I you mean, remember what Mansoor looked like? Very baby fat And made him get in shape. I wouldn't say that Mansoor was ever fat. No, not at all. No. Retribution, and this is something I think everybody assumed, Vince saw Antifa during... 1,000%. It it, yeah. it it happened like a week after people started seeing Antifa in the news period. So, absolutely. And, and another interesting one is they kind of threw somebody under the... Maybe not threw him under the bus, but they said that Seth Rollins doesn't hang out with any talent. No, he's got a bus and kind of a, a child learner. and a wife... And millions of dollars and multiple businesses that he's probably running through the email account on his phone. Yeah, <laughs> Seth Rollins probably doesn't hang out with a lot of the boys and a lot yeah. of the people in the back. I I I one thousand percent bet that because he's. I'd, I'd been, rather hang out with Becky too, probably. He's been the top guy in WWE for a fucking decade. He he has. That's the thing. Like Mansoor and uh, Mace, like. They don't have a lot to do outside of the stuff like WWE has told them to do that day. Like, yeah, yeah, Seth is like, and this isn't me trying to be like, believe in the corporate, but like Seth Rollins probably has a lot of businesses that he's running on the side. I know he's got the CrossFit thing. He's got like four coffee shops. Um, he's Seth Rollins. His wife is in TV shows and shit. So like, I'm sure he's probably busy. He's probably on his bus doing business. Do your thing, Seth. Fuck what people right. say. <laughs> so, well, speaking Fuck. of retribution, a second ago, let's go to somebody they ne- another one they never figured out. I'll be honest with you, his best days were the two hundred five live days. I think were the cruiserweight oh, classic. Man. The initial cruiserweight classic was just magic, a and thing of beauty. The original cruiserweight the, classic and the original Wim, uh, May the Young European classic as well. and May Young. Yeah, the tournaments yeah. they did. I mean, bringing in people like Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. I mean, they were doing stuff that AEW, like, I don't know. Anyway, but it, with, that leads us to Mustafa Ali or Ali or Mustafa Ali. Or There's a, about three person. names on this list today that we're going to talk about that I will, will say don't make sense. That one doesn't make sense to me. Like. Yeah. And and let's let's talk real for a moment. And and I'm going to say the next thing that I'm going to say. Uh oh. We live in a world where representation is a big thing, and you want to make sure that all walks of life and all people are represented, not just on your TV show, but in your world. That dude 
is a solid stand-up human being, former police officer, legitimate guy with a family and everything, who is very open about his culture, his religion, and who he is, which is not the culture and religion that every American television viewer gets exposed to. So that's a great dude to use on like, hey, everybody can be a WWE superstar. Everybody can play in the game. Everybody's a talent. is insanely talented. And he's so fucking good. Like, honestly, like, we're going to talk about another guy here in a little bit who I understand why he's gone. I don't understand now, why this guy's gone. Another thing Don't understand it. Another thing that we were going to do, and maybe we could bring it in now, I don't know if any of the previous names really we care too much to bring up with this, but where would you like to see him go, or where could you see him thriving? Like, New my Japan. Immediate, I was thinking best of the Super Juniors. Can you picture? New Japan. Yeah. Let him fight the sack. The, the sack. Sack Zaber <laughs> Jr. That's going to be a t-shirt on gettingwork.com. Sack Zaber. Sack Saber Jr. There you um, go. Let him fight Zack Sabre Jr. Let him fight Okada. I could see him, Let being him an outside, fight. I could see him being an outside. Bullet who's the guy? Who, guy. Who's the guy with with his, uh, his his who's had his brain taken out and put back in? Uh, Shibata. Oh yeah, Shibata, bro. What? Sorry, go ahead. No, so like, have him fight the Shibatas and the Okadas and all of that. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll talk about rest, rest, wrestle, dram, wrestle, re- wrestle, wrestle, sleep. Yeah, when can we talk about wrestle dream? Okay, we'll get to that anyway. When, when they tell me the lineup, we got most of the lineup. So Mustafa Ali should honestly be the the dude in a playground that's not used to people being the dude. He's going to have fun for a bit. I could see PWG. Yes. I could see GCW. I could see, yeah, I, I could see him go over to Progress. Don't uh, go to AEW. Don't go just to the other television show. No, there's go someone else. all I, I the cool gonna, shit. There's someone else I think could kill AEW. Uh, that would be great for AEW, but I don't know if it's Mustafa Ali. So after Mustafa Ali, our next talent is Dana Brooke. Oh, they another one they tried so many times. So athletic, he, hell of a bodybuilder, and improved. The, oh, improved from the time she started in WWE oh. to right now, dude, she was the best she had ever been. Stepped her right game now up. Was the best she had ever been. Like her fucking moves look better. Her characters, but she understands how to work the cameras. Like not okay. There's, She's a and, completely different person than when she was first in her day. This is this moment where I'm going to say, Brendan and I are not wrestlers. We've never wrestled. We're not inside the business. We talk purely as fans <laughs> outside the business. I do some things I call wrestling. He never wrestles mind. He wrestles the ladies. But no, from... It's, it's very lonely. It's by myself. The outside perspective. You also can see when a talent improves over the years, and you can tell that what they're doing, they give a fuck about and are getting better at. Dana Brooke 1000% has been doing that. That's somebody who, regardless of the fact that they didn't fucking use her, is she got fans or better. Not, is he a lifelong fan or even not a lifelong fan? You can tell when someone cares, and you can tell when they grow. Yes. Um, I'll tell you what. like, And usually it's someone that you didn't like at first. I didn't like Dana Brooke at first. <laughs> And then yeah. she grew, and I'll tell I you another one. I didn't get it. I didn't get it first. I was like, "What is this? What is this person doing here?" And then eventually, I was like, "Oh, okay, she's cool. She's kind of like a, a different character in the world." Yeah. You know, yeah. another one who's kind of like her from that bodybuilding world who just signed a huge deal. Jade Cargill didn't like her at first, but she doesn't need this business. She doesn't have to do the it. Future. She, she does it because she loves it and she's learning it and she's a badass and uh vince needs to give her the money no not vince quit saying Uh, that ari emmanuel ari emmanuel and tko need to give jade all the money all the money she needs to sit down with sean and them for a bit in nxt and have some fun and like once she gets into their system and learns their absolutely tweaks it a bit no fucking way you think she's straight to do not put her in nxt well, no I mean, okay, way. No, no. okay, don't. Okay, you know what? Don't put her on the show, but have her down there training with them. Have her down there learning. In the you put her, them, but mm, appearing on the main show. I think you put her in like a private gym. Up. You have her go like. It, 
Okay, here's the we thing. We got off the subject. This is other stuff. We're going to come back to the list. Yeah. We got to talk about Jay Cargill for a minute. Jay Cargill, we about to we talk about you. We're talking we were about you. So, we were there for the last match. Jay Cargill, we were what, there. Yeah, there my was. opinion, what you do, you 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 work out a contract with some private wrestling gym company, maybe Cody's place, something like that. She does she's not go because, on television. Cody's a big reason she's there. She's you keep her off TV. Movie. She needs to go perfect. You need to work out an entire year of what she's going to do. Like, here's how you're going to debut. Here's what you're going to do for six months. Here's the first big move, the first big pin, the first big loss, the first title, bop, 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 bop. Get her prepared for everything. And then debut her on a fucking pay-per-view or a SmackDown or a Raw, a big event. Like, if it's a Raw or a SmackDown, it needs to be like, and I don't know the schedule. It needs to be like a Madison Square Garden Raw or like SmackDown at like like Brooklyn. Uh, what's the, the 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 venue in Brooklyn where the Nets play? Um, the oh, one I they always do something. But you know what I'm saying? Like it has to be a gigantic to do debut. You re- do you remember when Hogan and Raw uh, Hogan and Rock stood there? That's what you need, and you and need Jade and Becky. And Rhea Ripley. No, Becky no. first. No, the, I understand what you're saying. Hear me out. Hear me out. No. Rhea's the long term. Rhea, no, no Rhea, Rhea is the long we'll game. It. You're not going to do it twice. That's the real this is awesome moment. No, exactly. Yeah. That's your WrestleMania. WrestleMania is Jade Rhea. Hear me out. You Becky's have to debut her, Becky. You have to debut her against Becky so you have the man. Or Charlotte. No, because hear me, the, the marketing. The man versus that bitch <laughs> the man that bitch you, you know imagine what? the crowd the man that bitch the man that bitch the man that bitch dude so, i'm wait, writing wait. this shit vince but do you realize mango shada is as spicy as jade cargill there you go. That it all bit, ties together. together. It all ties together. I threw the bottle over my shoulder to the other side of the room so I can't anyway, hold it up in the camera book. again. That's terrible. It happened. Uh, but anyway, next one. So talking about Dana Brooke, we talked about how we saw a talent grow. The next talent grew, but has been a goddamn staple for two fucking decades. Shelton Benjamin. I was a Shelton Benjamin fan when he was the gold standard, when he had the gold hair, when he had a dragon on his tights, when he went to the fucking fucking ring of honor and he was fucking, what was that? America's greatest tag team or or like Charlie Haas and Charlie Haas and Benjamin. But like, like he's talent. Oh yeah. How do you not just keep him on as like trains doing the stuff that everybody goes crazy that Kofi does before like the jumping ladder to ladder running off the ladder and flipping onto people oh man he is somebody who understands he'll do it he understands how the physical part works I loved Hurt Business with them I really felt like they dropped the ball with the Hurt Business a lot do you now they've kind of done their renewed one with the Profits do you feel that that new version of the Hurt Business with the Street Profits can do something I feel like what it did was lose Shelton Benjamin his job. There you go. But, yeah, I I don't know. We'll see. I I mean, I like all those guys in it. I can't. Yeah, anyway. So I think that brings us to our next talent. This is a moment where this isn't the talent that I said, I I can't believe they're gone. This is not it. I, I understand that this person's gone. But I also don't understand why the investment was made in this person in the beginning. Top their dollar. best work, their best work was, and I don't mean this is a bad thing. Like I really enjoyed it. Did you watch the show where they go and get the superstar Be- memorabilia yeah. back? Yeah, he most most there. wanted treasures. He best thing he did. He yeah. was amazing in that role as, as a wrestler. Terrible, yeah. awful. They the ra- the rapping was generic. The The moves were awful, and, and the character just didn't come across real. They made him different than himself. And once he had that bad spell on the top rope or on the dive, and Michael Cole was just making fun of him every week, I'm like, he's done. Yeah, you, You're not going to get around being the guy 
that is constantly talked about bad on the mic. Top Dolly should go host a show on Vice TV. There you or go. Or like YouTube. Because you're great at that. That was amazing. Best thing he did. The wrestling. Dude, whatever. So we talked about Top Dollar. Now we're going in. And I think we're going to talk about him as a couple. I think we're going to talk about him as a couple. Uh, Emma and Riddick Tenille. Moss. Dashwood. Tenille Dashwood. And her partner... Riddick Moss. Moss was supposed to be the guy for so long. Like they always talked about who's down in the system that you see. Like I've listened to so many podcasts and it's funny how many people had talked about Riddick Moss down in the system and they tried so many things. I remember when it was with Tino Sabatelli and he for a little bit and I won't lie it was very interesting I actually watched it when they would show the WWE combine where they had the NXT people run the he combine. was one of those people that like had crazy scores in the, in the pieces stud. of those combines. he might be one he's like a Cesaro where he's just physically gifted he can truly be one of those people that says they, they're they better than you like I mean he's but he he just never went I mean Madcap Moss was I think the only reason that went over is how much people wanted to boo Baron Corbin. And I, I don't, I don't know. Emma never getting a chance with them is a shame. I feel like Emma, I feel like Emma is more of a, and she's one of the ones that was brought back like top dollar, but not like top dollar. I feel like she's more of an old school road warrior wrestler than we might understand. I We've seen her go, from I want, WWE I, to the Indies to Ring of Honor to Impact back to WWE to getting fired. She's probably going to go right to somewhere else. Is she I more of a rotor than we care? I see her going to AEW. I think that's a mistake. Why? I think she could just keep going company to company to company to company to Indie to Indie to Indie to Indie. Because she's a commodity. You can advertise to Neil Dashwood on your card. And yeah. she's one of those like internet personality wrestlers that everybody knows and will bring eyes to your what you're doing. Right. I I I, I don't believe in AEW for a lot of the people that are on this list today. I'll be honest with you. These releases There's one that we're big talking one that about I do. There's are one big one that I not do. AEW talent. We're gonna and, fight about it, aren't we? We're gonna fight about it, but let's talk about we talked about Emma. We talked about Riddick Moss. Let's talk about the one, the only, the the the, the Bugenhagen, Mister Rick Boogs. That dude is a he is so strong. Like you're this the is one the one I don't get. You're the one that initially introduced me to him on some of his Instagram videos, and he's a big metal guy. He plays big, guitar. He shreds yeah, on guitar. Yeah. He lifts weights in his garage and screams like a psychopath. He's a stud, and he seems like he's up for doing like. Uh, I, he seems like exactly the WWE mold. That How do you not use him? He's jacked to the gills. He's a fucking, looks like a goddamn unit. He has a great personality. He knows how to talk. He can play the guitar, like, really well. He can, like, do, like, like shredding metal guitar. That's, that's he really has, well. Yeah, he has a weird, he's got, I mean that to say he's got a weird talent. Like okay. something you can kind of take and be like, ah, oh, let's make that. No one else can do that in the locker room. Wait, there's and then he's just list ripped. who kind of plays guitar. Well, but that's not th not this style. Okay, and we'll sorry. get we'll, okay. we'll get to that guy in a moment. Right, but sorry. now, I think Rick Boogs was such a waste. Yeah. How do you not take that guy? Who is basically guitar playing Ultimate Warrior? Probably more talented, probably yeah. a nicer guy, probably not a bigot. They made but, him a side piece. <laughs> but Jack to the Gills knows what he's doing, understands a character, was in your commercials. They put him in a Netflix movie. There was a Netflix movie where a kid gets like a magic mask. And like starts becoming a pro wrestler. I don't remember the name of it right now. I think it's called like the main event or something. Gotcha. But then he wrestles a bunch of people and like they use WWE wrestlers. It's like a WWE production. And he was like one of the big rivals for this kid. 
And, like, they used him. He knows how to act. How do you let this motherfucker go? Doesn't make fucking sense. It and doesn't. I'm not even... It's not going to make sense out of I didn't cheer the... And I'm not even saying I was the biggest Rick Boogs cheer guy. Like, Rick Boogs! I wasn't, I wasn't that guy. Yeah. But when you make a list of who are you going to sign, who are you going to use, who are you going to push, who meets the WWE criteria, how is it not this fucking dude? Right. That doesn't make sense to me. So... How about... Ah, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. I was first exposed to her. There was a cool show they did on the WWE Network for a bit. Um, What was the one that was kind of a behind the scenes of NXT? It was like AEW All Access before AEW All Access. It was uh, building ground or breaking ground or proving ground. Proving, maybe proving, breaking ground. Breaking through, breaking out, breakout. Something ground. I think it's something ground. Uh, anyway, something. but she was on there. They called her Noof. Uh, she was in, in I That's think her she name. was one of the That's longest, yeah, she was one of the longest term people in NXT. Yeah, she's been around she forever. Was, I never believed. You know how you gotta, I mean, yeah. even though we don't believe, you gotta have that, Yeah. every now and then I need that, uh. It's pro wrestling, but when yeah. you're 65, when you look like you're 65 pounds soaking wet, and I mean that as, as, a, as hyperbole, I know she's not actually 65 pounds soaking wet. But when you look that small compared to everybody else that you're wrestling and you're not Rey Mysterio, it's hard. It's hard to believe. And she came up to SmackDown when she get the like quickest win, like three seventeen or something like that. Like Yeah. They, they, they had, had a t shirt that was an Austin three. Like that's not enough. You can't just have like a t shirt phrase. Like you gotta build the character. And unfortunately they moved her up and didn't build the character. I don't like. I, I yeah. I, I hate to say it, and I'm sorry to like yeah be judging, but yeah, the, the, like you said, 65 pounds soaking wet or whatever. I did. It's not believe. It's unfortunately, it's the same reason why I can't get into Rio. Never got into Rio. I'll never be a Rio, like Rio fan. Rio. Can't do it. I'll never be a Rio fan. And like she, she might she be the, talented. She, has, she might I give love, a shit. She might be awesome. And they but, always say she has the best smile. Well, she does. I watched Jay Cargill and Charlotte oh. Flair and Becky Lynch and Brooke Baker. And Wait, who? Brooke Baker? Britt Baker. Brooke Baker. Brooke Baker is a new wrestler. That's my wrestler that I made up. Brooke Baker. Oh, God. This is going like to be a clip. combination of Brooke Hogan and Britt Baker. I'm 1,000% making this into a TikTok video. Yeah, Britt oh, Baker. So no, I'm going to tag Britt boy. Baker. You can totally trash me. As much as you want for accidentally calling you Brooke Baker. You're not even worth trashing. Yeah, I'm nobody. <laughs> so, speaking of nobodies. Oh, buddy. Ezekiel might still work there. But Elias got his ass fired. Are you not an Elias guy? Who fucking cares? You don't. You never walked with Elias? There is. I've never seen the meat on that bone. Never. Never, ever. He used to do never some understood it, never NXT. got it. Really? Yeah, I don't get it. I'm not. I don't get it. I think the idea of of a wandering like road dog, like playing guitar from town to town, character was cool. But in NXT, they did like I'm gonna have a concert. Like like they made it to where he was like I'm a musician before a wrestler. He did what he did what he had to do with what he was given. But as a wrestler, I thought he was talented. When was that ha- Na- name 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 a like top tier Elias match? There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, but still, come on. There you go. He was still good. Okay. I'll I'll give 100% credit for the Ezekiel thing. Okay. That was that was a good pivot for a person who dude, dude, you got you got to figure out how to how to make it work and how to keep getting paid. Great. You came up with the, the, the Ezekiel thing. You made that work. Awesome job. But like, once you switch back to Elias, like I don't fucking care anymore. Like you didn't even explain the switch back. Like they don't care about you, so I sure as fuck don't. They didn't even explain your story, so I don't fucking care. So I, I just broke my toe shoe. Sorry. Go ahead. What do you mean? How do you break a toe shoe? I don't know. Apparently, there was an elastic band that I could tighten, and I tried to tighten it, and it pulled right off. 
so hopefully it'll still be so hard. what what anyway. comes what happens now do you not have like a toe no 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 i feel like uh so you could tighten the back oh so it's just loose yeah you can so your socks are loose no my toe shoes these your are shoes toe shoes they have a rubber bottom they have a sole All right, and let's go to the biggest one of that day. I'm going to call this episode Thirsty Thursday, colon, toe shoes. It's supposed to be ba ba tune day ba ba tune day That's going to be the subtitle, toe shoes. So, ba ba tune days toe shoes. So, on 9-21, later, all of the names we talked about so far kind of came out in a cluster. All these names came out in like a... I would honestly, it felt to me like a two hour span. They kind of just hammered all the names out. But later in the day, about like five or six o'clock, another name came out. A name that while, while crazy to see, I understand. A name that was so crazy that not many people could get the name itself over. It's Mr. Dolph Ziggler. Nick Nemeth. uh, Nikki from the Spirit Squad. Somebody I've been watching in wrestling for about 13 years. I remember watching him wrestle at Chris Jericho in like 2008. Yeah. I remember when he was doing his initial walking around shaking people's hands. Hi, I'm Dolph Ziggler. Hi, I'm Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. He had more theme songs than I can remember. He had like, I'm here to show the world. I'm here to show the world. Come on. Even just the record scratch and him walking out to a black stage. Yeah. uh, When he had Big E with him as the muscle and AJ Lee. And he cashed in one of the best money in the bank cash ins ever. The crowd went nuts. He switched the song at one point to I am perfection. I am perfection. I am perfection. Cuz there was that weird comparison in the beginning of his career where every when he first started every Okay, I'm not going to say when he first started, when the Dolph Ziggler character first started, everybody said that motherfucker looks like Mr. Perfect. That motherfucker looks like a young Mr. Perfect. I can see that. Yeah. And his song was, I am perfection. I am perf-. And I was like, oh, holy shit. You're totally aping into it. The fact that you look like fucking Mr. Perfect. Right. So they released him later in the day on 921. At least it came out later in the day on 921. So I want to, I want to go to you. What do you think happens to Dolph Ziggler? I think he's the one I would say could be AEW world champ if he goes to AEW. I could also see some things where he he could take the Cody route when Cody was really and become just the biggest name on the indies. Um, his brother posted a picture of both of them together. And it had photoshopped in. They each had the tag team titles, and then one had the TBS one. It, I mean, Dolph Nick would save his brother's career probably over there, but I, I don't know how. I, you probably wouldn't want to pair them together. I don't. I don't dislike a lot of wrestlers as much as I dislike Ryan Nemeth. <laughs> okay. I don't think a lot of wrestlers are as useless. As much as I think Ryan Nemeth is useless. I haven't turned a lot of wrestling off. I haven't turned a lot of YouTube videos off. (laughs) As many times as I have. Because Ryan Nemeth was on my screen. I don't know the guy personally. God damn. what 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 a goddamn black hole of charisma. Really? What a talentless, soulless, fucking goddamn void. What the fuck is wrong with Ryan Nemeth? Who told him that he had talent? Seriously. And that's my problem with this whole thing. Dolph's going to go to AEW. Nick Nemeth is going to go be on fucking BTE with Ryan Nemeth. And then he's going to fucking show up and work at AEW. And you know what's going to happen to Nick Nemeth? Jack fucking nothing. 
Same thing that happened to Johnny TV. Jack fucking nothing. He's going to be a third rate character. We Okay. He could be fun in New Japan. I mean, if you put him up there and get him really built up, like, he would be That's fun what I wish you would do. Okada he needs to Cody. Or, like you yeah. said, he needs to Cody. He yeah. needs to call the list. Call the shot. Here's all the things I want to do outside of WWE. Dude, like, Nick Nemeth Okada... Take my money. Yeah. Nick Nemeth Naito, take my money. Yeah. Nick Nemeth versus pick your top dude in England. Take I would my have, money. I would have fun with Nick Nemeth and Kenny Omega if we could find a way to make that happen somewhere. Honestly, make it happen in AAA. Yeah. Don't make it happen in AEW. Make it happen in AAA or fucking New Japan. Or just one of those forbidden door moments where they come in for a little bit. Like Zack Sabre Jr. is an AEW, but he comes in for like one show a year maybe. I just... I, the We we eventually got to stop this TNA style inflow of, of like, Oh, I don't work at WWE anymore. Let me go to AEW. Like, I want everybody to have a job. That's why I want I everybody make- to make money. I don't want people to... I don't want Dolph Ziggler to not make money. But I don't want to not like what Dolph Ziggler does on television. Yeah. All right. So that was the main day. That was the day with most of the meat and all of the names. The next day, there were just three. One in IL, one in XT. What do you got there? I got another beer. Lining. Is that a Lining Kugel? It's I a Lining Kugel Oktoberfest. I figure it's oh. fall. I need to start drinking Oktoberfest beer. Not fruit punch beer? You're... I, I'm a little bit now jealous of your fruit punch beer. It's delicious. Fruit forced, really. New Belgium kills it. Everything they do is fucking fire. Solid beers. So, Lightning Kugel Oktoberfest. Hold on. Ooh, that's a pretty beer. Good color. It's good. Solid. Like, I don't, I don't mean this as a negative. Nothing Lightning Kugel does is super off base. Like nothing. Yeah, yeah, I was. This isn't like the most out of the box Oktoberfest I've ever had. It's a great example of what it's supposed to be. One hundred percent. You you made a perfect example of the beer. Yep. Okay. So anyway, uh, there was another uh, next in line. Yeah. Who was that? Abule Abadi hyphen Fitzgerald. I'm going to say that one more time. The weird part is they spelled the word hyphen. No, I'm just joking. Abule, A-B-U-L-E, Abadi Abadi. hyphen Fitzgerald. Hyphen Fitzgerald. Uh, They're a next in line talent. Not sure who it was. Never saw it. I know nothing about this person, about this talent. Sorry you lost your job. Yep. Next Next up. Ikaman Jiro from NXT. Ikaman Jiro, better known as the Jacket Guy. Jacket time. He he was pretty funny. No, he wasn't. He he he, he was funny. What did you do that was funny? He was funny. Exactly. We got to stop employing anything that just makes us laugh. One time. Like, once again, good for him for getting a job in wrestling. Good for him for getting somewhere and making money. I'm not mad at... I'm not he upset took, at the talent for getting WWE's money. No, no, good no, he, for you. He was talented. The problem was, this gimmick with this jacket is not amusing. No. And the fact that you have to use the jacket as a way... I, I don't like it. If that's all you had, then you should have let him go. Yep. You, a long time ago. Like you shouldn't sign people where the only or like put them on TV and push them like you're a jacket. The gimmick was he had a jacket with his face on it. It was never like oh he's crazy so he pays the fucking dude to make clothes with his face on him or he's rich so he's eccentric and buys clothes with his face on him. No, the thing was here's Ikamanjiro from Japan, I believe Japan. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, who has a jacket with his face on it. Yep. That was the character. Yep. Who the fuck cares? He had a feud because someone stole his jacket once. And that's all you can do is like when the character's only about the jacket, all yes. you can do is stuff with the jacket. 
Right. So speaking okay. of a jacket. Or a jacket. Wait. That's a jackass? Jacket? Hang on. Did you just get touched at the Bro. airport? Did you just get touched at the airport? No, I was doing the bro thing with smoke. Yeah, so did he, 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 but so was he. Yeah. So, our last person who no longer works at WWE today is Matt. I Williams. have a feeling that you're going to be angry, and I don't know, or not angry. I, I you're, you're, I'm going to let you. I feel that Matt. Oh, Riddle... by the way, real quick, real quick, real quick. When you do this, it's like your dad telling a story post. <laughs> Let me prop myself up and tell you why so that young man is not good for business. So let me tell you about Matt Riddle. Oh, boy. What the fuck? What in the hot fuck? How are you going to make a character based around being a stoner weedhead douchebag and then fire him for being a stoner weedhead douchebag? Seriously. Like... The character is, I don't care about my life. I'm super fucking high all the time. I don't know what's going on. And in real life, his life fell apart. And he got released from his job. And like he's dating a porn star now. Which is nothing wrong with that. But like, like, you're living this wild character life that your wrestling character was supposed to be. But also, why did WWE let him do that? And by let him do that, I mean, why did you make a character... Why did you make him do that? ...about being a stoner douchebag? The bongs? The bongos? Like, like the dude's a fucking actual MMA fighter. A very small percentage of him online was like, I like the weed, dude. Like, that was a very small percentage of Matt Riddle on the internet. And I'm sorry for doing that, but like that's what I used to think of when I watched Matt Riddle. I smoke weed, dude. And like he would just have these terrible fucking interviews. You know, I saw an amazing match of his. You know where it was? It was on the WWE Network. It was not in WWE. It was in progress. Yeah, it was in progress. Him and Walter. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable stuff. Best things he He, ever did were in progress. he he, He and Timothy Thatcher. Oh my gosh, man. He and Timothy Thatcher beat the crap out of each other so good they they wait they are really good at just messing up like i don't know it's they wanted to make a caricature of a stoner like i i I don't know but why what here's the thing there eventually always has to be a payoff to a character yeah what's the payoff to you're a stoner who doesn't understand how the world works it's my same thing with Orange Cassidy. What's the payoff? Of like, so eventually he's not an idiot. Like he's not an idiot. How is care? But no, for Matt Riddle, like, what's the what? Like, where's the payoff for the character of like, I don't care, I'm an idiot. Like, eventually he's not an idiot, and then you just have a normal person. <laughs> like that's not that's not a character change. Like. They, they, they built Matt Riddle around being, you're dumb. You're high. Nobody knows what you're saying. Nobody understands your references. You're just that dumbass in the background. Am I defending Matt Riddle? Nope. Am I a Matt Riddle fan? Eh. I used to like Matt Riddle matches. But also, I watched Matt Riddle in WWE, which actually made me like Matt Riddle less. If you've watched Matt Riddle's previous stuff and then seen, it's irritating because it's a waste. This they is... use they use his knee, they use a couple submission. That's about yeah. it. Like, yeah, it. But he's a legit fighter and yeah. could be one. And honestly, this is the one where dude's gonna go to AEW. He's going to AEW. Tony Khan is going to sign him. You think? One oh, mark my words. Mark my words, internet. Matt Riddle is going to AEW. Maybe not like next week. He's going to AEW. Tony Khan's going to give him money. He's going to go over there. And he's going to be a member of the best friends. Who who shows up in AEW first? Dolph Ziggler or Nick Namath or Matt Riddle? Matt Riddle. 
I I'm opposite of you. I think it's Nemeth. I think Nemeth's a bigger a bigger debut. I think if you do it right, Nick Nemeth is like all out or full gear. Like like a big pay-per-view. Matt Riddle could run out on dynamite. Like, I think Matt Riddle is just like it's Matt Riddle! Like, it's the same guy. Like, Dolph Ziggler's gonna be a whole new character. We've never called him Nick Nemeth before. Right. So I think well, that's, that's what, more like build. What we do know is we're gonna have to wait till at least December to find out. A lot, a lot of people are There's gonna wind no up in new places at the end of this year. New com- No compete clause. We'll see what happens around the turn of the year. That's when it'll start happening. Once again, we are not happy that anybody ever loses their jobs. We hope all of nope. you on that list get a new fucking job. We hope all of you get paid lots of money. We hope all of you take a lot of money from somebody who wants to give it to you. Uh, go get that paper boo-boo, as the kids say. Paper but boo-boo. all of you wrestlers are going to go somewhere. All of you people don't don't give a fuck about wrestling are going to go somewhere else. You're all We're in better keep shape watching. than we are. Yeah. We're going to be watching you. We're going to keep drinking and watching you guys. And with that being said, Brendan. I poured myself a little bit of mezcal from the bottle here. It's Thirsty Thursday. You Thirsty know what we got to finish up with? Let me grab my uh, dad joke decanter. There you go. You got a dad joke? Uh, How do you know when a bad joke becomes a dad joke? I don't know. When the punchline is apparent. People of the internet, I'm Mike. I'm disappointed in that joke. (laughs) I'm Brendan. We'll see you next week. That was good. You got to admit that.